So um, the thing about snakes are that they're very, very flexible, right? So um, let's just start by loosening up. And so I want you to imagine your fingers are wet and you're just trying to flick water off your fingers. Just get that arm moving like that, both arms. So notice how my fingers are coming from the inside out. So fingers touching the chest and flicking out. There you go, and extend the elbows as you're doing it. So you also get a little in and out motion, getting those elbows warmed up. That's it. Try and get your pinkies to whip out a little bit as you're doing this. Not super hard, just enough. And now get your shoulders into the deal, so your shoulders are moving. Looks like we're on some giant dance party game right now. <laughs> Looking good. Come on, Cameron, you can do it. So Cameron got his junior black belt. Everyone go, ooh, Cameron. Yay, although, Cameron. Although Cameron's either frozen or winning the self-control game, I'm not sure. Um, Oh, Cameron's in on another station now. Okay, and now uh, what I want you guys to do is we're going to take our legs, and I want you to just take your leg and spring it up. Good, just nice, about waist height, not too high, just moving that, moving that around so that uh, that's that's going on. Just bump, little front kick. Turn for the roundhouse kick. Another front kick. Another front kick. Other leg. Just flicking that nice and light. Good. Turn for round kick. Turn for another round kick. Some front kicks again. Good. Good. Keep going like that. Hey, Homers. Good. Yep. Okay, now we're going to take some of that movement we did before. We're just flicking like this, and we're going to add some power to it. Um, so we're going to go, we're going to try this first kind of rear hip movement power. So uh, let's just move our arms like this, just swinging side to side like that. Now, I want you to do this. As you're swinging, let the hip lead so that the shoulders are behind. See, I'm holding my shoulders back. Boom. Boom. So that you have like a whip-like motion. So you turn from the ground up. Boom. We're going to be using this kind of movement. For a lot of those things. Feel how much power there is without really trying. Just nice and light and loose. Good speed. All right. Oh, hey, Macy. Hey, Kyla. All right, next. Um, let's, let's simplify that into a strike. So let's start our right hand up here and our right foot forward. And oh, I guess that looks like this too. Um, and you're going to wind up and you're going to throw a back fist. So what's a back fist? It's a strike that hits with the back of your fist, okay? So it comes across like this, and we're going to use a rearward hip motion. Just like we were practicing before with this kind of movement, so from the ground out, bang, you're going to come way past the target here. Wham. Go ahead. Wham. Just work those. Boom. Throw 10 or so on this side. Keep that elbow high as you're throwing it. Keep your shoulders safe. Boom. Boom. Really turn through hard and fast. Bam. Boom. Keep your elbow ahead of your hand so you don't hyperextend. Boom. Okay, let's switch to the other hand now. Boom. 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 Okay, good. Now, 
So we're gonna try that same kind of move, but we're gonna try it with using a forward hip motion. Now this is a much snappier kind of strike, and it's a little less uh, easy to control. So I want you to slow it down at first, and then you can speed it up in a minute. So watch. Instead of bringing my hip backwards, like this, I'm bringing my hip forward, like the other hand. Now this is the back hand, but instead of bringing it across, naturally I'm gonna bring it forward. So kind of like I was doing that, but it's gonna start over here. Boom, bang. Nice and flicky, like a snake. Boom, boom, boom. See if you can outdo the uh, frame rate in, in your computer. That means you you'll barely be able to see it on the screen. Frame rate on the eye isn't that much faster than frame rate on a screen. So, depending on how quick your uh, your webcam is, you can switch sides. It might look more or less like that to a, an opponent. If the refresh rate on your screen is good. Boom. So again, it's this part of the movement. So like that. We use that hand to bring it across on the inside, but other way. Bang. Quick little back fist. Nice. So that's a different kind of jab, right? I might use that. Jab has a couple of functions. One of which is to stun. Okay, so if I hit you for a second, I've uh, pulled your head out of the fight for a moment. Another one is to stabilize, right? So. We were working on head movement a lot before. Well, I've got can have great head movement, but then boom, I get hit, and I'm uh, you're gonna know exactly where my head's gonna be right after you hit me. It's gonna be right behind where it was when you you hit me, right? So it stabilizes the target, makes it easier to find. So boom, and come at you with that second hand. Um, and so th this is that kind of quick little jab, okay? And it might do some damage too. So let's now try this quick little flick of a flick of a jab, a back fist, a back fist and jab, bop, and then follow it up boom, with a big right hand. Now, what we're gonna do, so I'll throw it with your left and then follow it with a big right. But I want you to leave your left hand out there on their face for just a little bit longer, right? So that they don't see boom, the other hand coming for a moment. So you're gonna flick that out. Boom. So you're going to start that right, just as the left is reaching. Go ahead, fault, fault through those. Let's see how sneaky you can look. Get closer to the camera if you can. You can kind of see whether your blind is working. By blind, I mean the way that this hand covers the other hand. Good. Sneaky. Good. Make sure you're turning the body nicely, so there's a lot of rotation in both of these strikes. So on the left, on the left hand, the left hand goes forward. The right hand, the right hip goes forward. Good whip, Sarah. Nice. Use your feet to pull through from the bottom. Good. Okay. Relax your shoulders for a little bit. Take a second to rub them out. When you're doing that kind of whip-like motion, you just have to be a little good to yourself because it is demanding on your muscles. And Trinity's here. Okay, the other cool thing about having that snappy little whipping strike is it's easy to double up, right? So if I throw a big right hand, bam, bam, that's good, but it takes time, right? If I throw a quickie little back fist, I can get those off much faster paces, not wham, wham, bum, bum. <clears throat> so why is that helpful? If you're sparring and they block and their hand comes down to the block, you can hit them right after they block, right? If you have that quick little whip, bum, bum. Um, and uh, speed kills, man. So you want that <laughs> a little extra gain the initiative. Hey, Charlie, you're on the call. I'm so glad you're here. All right, so um, 
Let's try doubling it up now. So just back fist, back fist, okay? Black belts, you can, you can play around back fist, straight jab, straight jab, back fist. Uh, you can mix a straight jab in there with your back fist. Other students just stick with double back fist. One, two, right away. One, two, boom. That's it, good. Go ahead, Rihanna, try it. So left, 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 boom, boom, real quick. Use your hips. Hey, Amber, uh, not Amber, uh, Jackson, I think you should have your uh, same side forward that you're punching with. So if you're punching with your left hand, left foot forward. That way it's a jab off your front hand. Good, Felix, lots of hip motion, keep those knees bent. Class is so well attended. There's actually two screens. Tyler Birch in the house. Hey, Tyler. <laughs> okay, so Tyler, we're trying this really quick little snaky move. Just pop, pop. So you're taking one, one hand and bringing it across. Wham, wham. Okay, relax. Shake that out for a second. And then we're going to do the other arm. Okay, and black belts, you can continue per, uh, experimenting with strength and hook uh, uh, back fisting jabs, pump, pop, or pop, pump, or just double up the back fist like everyone else is doing, pump, pump. Notice how though the elbow always retracts. So even if I'm doubling those up, boom, boom, the elbow comes back. It's not this, there's no power there. That's just me wiggling my arm. The elbow has to come back, elbow and shoulder come back a little bit, watch, boom, boom. Okay, see how my elbow's traveling? Okay, so try the double jab, pop, pop. The double back fist jab, nice and loose, nice and fast, pop, pop. Good. Boom. Done, fast, nice. That's it. So Tyler, if you keep your thumb up, that'll give you the right, correct side of the hand. That's it. Good. Quinn, you're like a white ghost with your white shirt on uh, against that white background. I can barely see you. I move at all. It's really good. White tech guys are not in frame, so I can't see you doing anything. Save, are you okay? Give me a thumbs up if you're okay. All right, cool. I just saw you stop moving for a second there. Okay, good. Now, um, let's take the same idea, and what we're going to do is we're going to throw the first uh, back fist just to get them to flinch a little bit. And the second back fist, I'm gonna to aim to hit their gloves, right? So I go, bop, they get a little flinch, boom, and I hit their gloves, right? Or their guard if they're not wearing gloves. Bop, bop, and I'm gonna use that. I can push the guard down a little bit, boom, to follow it with a straight right. So I'm gonna see, imagine this is the left hand coming across. I flinch back and then it hits the hand and pins it down, creates an opening, right? So we're gonna to have to move our feet for this. So on the first one, I kind of lean forward, watch my, watch my body weight. I lean forward to cheat the distance, move that foot the second time. So I'll do it on the angle as you can see. I lean and then push off that back foot to cover the gap. Try slow, lean, push off the back foot to cover the gap. Lean, push off the front foot, to back, uh, back foot to get the gap. Lean, one, two. Lean, one, two, boom. Good. Try to cover that gap. And then you can add that straight right hand when you're ready. So it'll be a one, two, three, one, two, three. So kind of like four set, right? Jab, jab, straight, right. But we're changing the jabs to back fist now. Back fists tend to hit the outside of the guard. So they tend, they're better for trapping the guard. When you throw straights, they'll tend to compress the guard. Back fist will tend to put it out of position because they come across. Nice, Tyler, that looked brutal. Savage. Good, keep that guard up. Uh, good, good, good. Double pump, boom, move your feet. Move your feet on, those first, on that second one. One, I'm leaning. Two, I'm moving, boom. On the straight, on the straight up through your hand, switch feet whenever you need to. Your rear foot will travel a little bit. Good, Misty, good. You're covering good ground, Matthew Homer, 
but try and keep your other hand up. It's kind of a little falling down on the ground, falling down, bump, bump, bump. Still got to think about getting hit back. Okay, nice. Take a second and let's just uh, shake our arms loose a little bit. We've done some hard work on it. Just lifting and dropping your shoulder here. Get that warmed up. Good, keep going. So bend over, just kind of letting those drape. Another dance party going on here, it looks like. All right, good, good. All right, so let's look at another application of this kind of loose turning motion. Um, so this is gonna be a little hard without a partner. Um, I'll be right back and grabbing a prop. I learned this trick from Sensei Deb. <laughs> so we're gonna work on a clinch escape. So I know a lot of you, about half of you have another person in the room. That makes it helpful. Um, but if you don't, that's okay. You can do this by yourself. I'm gonna do it by myself. So a clinch is basically anytime you're grabbing their body um, to try and stop them from moving. Uh, the co most common clinch we use here at Integrity Martial Arts is called the combat clinch. So in a combat clinch, I'm grabbing the back of their neck with one hand, and they're doing the same with mine. And on the other side of their head, I've got my head kind of pressing into their neck and shoulder, um, and I'm grabbing their arm, okay, like this. So grabbing right above the elbow. So you can kind of picture that. That's, that's called a clinch, okay, or a combat clinch. So what we're going to work on next is if this hand here, if you can imagine this is someone's arm, and I'm gra is grabbing my neck, I'm gonna crush that with my, with my shoulder and then have that same kind of like whipping motion we use for our back fist or this kind of motion here. Remember that turning thing we did in the beginning? We're gonna use that to, to knock that wrist right off of our shoulder, right off our neck. Okay, just quick. Because you think about it, if their wrist is coming around my neck like this and imagine their arms there, if I turn here, could it still go that way? No, my shoulder's where their arm used to be. So their arm would have to be bent the wrong way for it to still be attached. So I just shrug that shoulder. I bring my chin a little bit to my shoulder. I bring my shoulder up, to my, up, up towards my ear. Boom. Get rid of all that space. You can drop your left hand if you want here. You're in clinching range, not, not um, punching range. That hand's not gonna hit you. So your guard isn't as important. And lifting that shoulder, that's the key ingredient. I want to settle my weight down into my rear foot when I do this. So right now I've got my left hand forward and I'm shrugging the left shoulder, pulling it back towards my right foot. Okay, you want to see that mirrored? Looks like that. Shoulder comes up, the hand comes down to help it. Roll a little bit, chin comes to the shoulder. Boom, swings back. So that move by itself is called a shock. If you have a partner, try that little thing, but not as hard and as fast as we just did because you can really hurt the wrist, okay? So again, put your right hand on the back of their neck and you can grab your arm, their arm with your left hand and you can try that, that shucking movement. Okay, if you don't have a partner, then what I want you to do is work the following thing instead. You're gonna work that shock and twist back with a low punch. So I twist back, boom, low punch. Okay, twist back, low punch. See how I start up here, see how tall I am? When I shrink back, I've gotten lower, boom, and I get even lower still with that punch. So I'm gonna be aiming for right about here on their body, just below the belt, okay? So try that, Tyler. So shuck back, bang, fire. So this move is called shuck, that's it. Jacob, you're turning well, you're getting your shoulder up well. Give me more on that punch, there it is. Good, good, good. Jackson, I like how you're being creative. So, um, with that noodle, good. That's it, oh, and really level change, get a lower on, the, on, that, on that chuck. Oh, and get lower in the shock. Shoulder up, turn. 
I'm coming off camera to watch for a second. And Kayla, careful with the Johnny's wrist, man. You could hurt him. That looked good. I got to change screen so I can see uh, Macy and Kyla. They're on the other screen. Nicely done, Will. Okay, great. So, um, having done that, uh, a lot of you guys know the rest, right? What's going to happen? I'm going to go. To, uh, is that we're going to shuck? We're going to turn back and fire a low punch. Um, so we're here. Imagine his hands on the back of my neck here. His imaginary right arm here. I shuck back and see how I've level changed. I've really turned my body 90 degrees. I don't want to do less than that because then my shoulder won't come far enough, enough across. And I don't want to do more than that because then he sees my back and he can come get my back. And I want him on my back. So I'm here, I, I shuck just about 90 degrees and then I turn back, boom, and I land that punch hard. Notice my left foot when I do this, I'm punching with my right, my left foot comes off to the side. I really want to be here. And I'm going to level change and grab both legs. Okay? So if you uh, have a partner, you can practice it on your partner. If you don't have a partner, you can just practice it in the air with me. So um, I'll, I'll mirror this time. So you're going to shut back, stay low, right straight punch, level change, grab both knees. So level change just means you bend your knees to get low. Okay? So shuck, wham, low, level change, grab those knees. Shuck, get low, level change, grab those knees. Shuck, boom, get low, level change, grab those knees. Shuck, boom, get low, boom. That's it. One, two, three. One, two, three. That's it, Chris. Try and bend only from the knees and not have your uh, head come forward very much at all. Might come forward a little bit, that's okay, but try not to, yeah. If I can see you, your back over your shoulders. Jackson, are you attacking me? I gotta dodge to defend myself. Okay, relax for a second. So, for those of you guys who are under green belt, um, <laughs> you may not have known this move. That's called shuck. S-H-U-C-K, um, and that's what that little move is. You'll feel it like slot, rip that hand, you know, slide it and grind it right off your neck. And that's kind of what the shuck is. <clears throat> and uh, for those of you guys who, are, who were students in uh, uh, the beginning of the year, um, you remember that we had another escape from clinch, duck under. So in duck under, we went forward um, down and forward to get out of the combat clinch. In shuck, we go down and backwards to get out of the combat clinch. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, remember we're doing that twisty thing that's been the premise of my whole class. It's really just about how to use this kind of motion, right? So let's do that again. Get the feel of it. Just Nice and whippy, get the hips moving for the shoulders. So you have what some people call offset timing, because I'm not moving all as one block. Good, you should feel it, that your arms are moving really fast if you time it just right. Whoa, Alex, yeah, that's right. Good, good, good. Getting a nice warm up out of that too. Okay. Now, here's what we're gonna use that kind of motion for now. We're gonna use it to help us spin, okay? So I'm here, oh my, I have this big motion. What I'm gonna do is as my arms come across, I'm actually gonna step with it. 
So my whole body is moving across this way. I'm starting a rotation. Okay, now when I do that, um, see how this foot lands just past the other foot and um, facing backwards, okay? That's gonna help me spin through. So then I'm all the way back to facing front again. Okay, so it should be a, a strong, but almost kind of graceful spin. You wanna make sure when you spin, you're only the ball of your foot's on the ground, not your heel, okay? What's the ball of the foot if you stand on tippy toes? The part of your foot that's touching the ground, not your toes, that's the ball of your foot. Okay? Okay, so I'm here. I step this foot across, spin through. I'll step back a little bit so I wind up, bring my arms across, foot after arms, bang, then the other foot. All right, now that we've had our little mini master class on how to spin, um, <laughs> what I want you to do now is you're gonna lift your right leg before, uh, lift it higher rather, not just lift it. So I'm here, I'm gonna lift it higher, boom, to come through, okay? What, what's that? Of course it's a roundhouse kick, right? So, um, but if I have all this pre-spin here, boom, to get that off the ground, I have a lot of power available. I'm coming across, okay? That'll be a good kick. Okay, so coming across, and then bring that left foot through after you land your right foot. Kick, man, boom. Beth, I'm gonna unmute you because it looks like you're asking me a question. What's up, Beth? I'm confused. About what? Um, about the spin, the spinny thing. Okay, so um, what, here's what I want you to do. Uh, step back so you have plenty of room. What? Bring your, bring your hands back behind you on your right side. Now bring your hands past you on your other side. Swing it past. Feel how that twists you? So start with your right side, twist it past you. That's the kind of feel I want you to get. Now, as it's twisting past you, Beth, feel how your, your right foot wants to come forward? I want you to let it come forward so that it starts to spin you. Let me see you do that one time, because I didn't see. Yeah, like that. Now, as your right foot comes across, Beth, use that coming across it and turn it into a roundhouse kick. Okay, I Yep. That's it, good. Now, the next step, Beth, is just to land it in front instead of behind you. So what we're gonna do now is I land it in front, that way I can spin right through. Okay. Tyler, that was great! Nice! Autumn, let me see you do it. Really good, that's way better than it looked the other day when we were practicing this. <clears throat> So learning how to spin powerfully is an important skill. Um, spinning, spinning allows you to get out of, of, of grabs. Like if you think about shuck, it's a quarter spin, right? And then it's a quarter spin back the other way. Quarter spin, quarter spin, boom. Um, if you think if someone was going to grab me, if I was trying to leave, you know, to run away and they're going to grab my shirt, it would be really natural and kind of make sense for me to just spin out of that and keep going. And if you watch football players, you know, one of, uh, like I, I often talk about, hey, you know what, I generally don't recommend spinning um, because I don't want to turn my back on my opponent. And that's, that's true when I'm not going to be in motion, right? But if I'm moving towards an exit and I get grabbed or secured and I, I want to spin to get out of it, that's good. The spinning I don't like is the spinning that people do to get fancy for movies and then think, oh my God, that looks so cool, it must be good. Just because it looks cool, it doesn't mean it's good, right, for self-defense. It's usually kind of the opposite. Real fights are ugly and they don't involve much fanciness. Okay, <clears throat> great. Um, so Beth had us the question and it was a really good question. Does anyone else, if anyone else has a question, just bring your hand right up to the screen and I'll unmute you. 
Okay, so I see Jackson and uh, Riona have questions, so I'm gonna go unmute them. All right, Jackson, go ahead and ask your question. Um, so with this whole spinning thing, I feel like for one, you get dizzy, and two, when exactly do you do the kick? So you want to do the kick in, uh, as late into the spin as you can. So when my shoulders are past the target, that's when I want to do the kick. So the kick happens, you know, this way of thinking about it, the kick happens a little bit behind you. Okay, now I'm exaggerating it a little bit because what you've typically done is you brought the knee up, twisted the shoulders once it's up, and have it come, come around after that. And that's right too. This is just exaggerating the rotation more than the other thing. Okay, good question. All right, Riona, I think you're also unmuted. I unmuted the mic that said Aiden, which I think is you. Yeah, Riona, go ahead. Um, how do you stop yourself from being dizzy when you're spinning around? Because I got myself so dizzy. <laughs> good question. So um, to some degree, if you're going to spin a lot, you're going to get dizzy. Uh, but there are some things that do help. So one way is that um, you, one of the reasons you get dizzy is because your head keeps whipping around and another reason you get dizzy is because you keep seeing the world zipping by you and it's disorienting to your brain. So as I spin, see so, you know, I keep my eye on the camera, boom, and then here I get right back to my target. So if I stay on target for a moment so that for almost that whole movement my head isn't turning, just everything else is, it'll stabilize my ears and my eyes uh, so that I get less dizzy. Okay. Now, some people get dizzy much faster. Um, some people like it's pretty hard to get dizzy. I don't know why, but uh, I know a couple of you guys in the class right now, you get dizzy super easy, super fast. So just be safe. If you find yourself like unstable, take a break. Don't fall over and hit your head on the coffee table. Okay, great. Um, did I get the questions? I think I did. I can't see everybody on screen right now. So, uh, Anyone else have a question? Put your hand real close to the camera so I can see it. Oh, I see a hand up from Don Metcalf. And look at that, they even use the cute um, uh, raise your hand function. All right, Don Metcalf family, you are unmuted. All right, hi. Um, if you're turning, you know, barefoot on, you know, dojo floor or carpet is one thing, but like, if you're on like, you know, sneaker sole on asphalt, it should, isn't like really easy to twist your ankle, which is obviously not conducive to literally anything, especially balance? Well, I mean... Like, how, how do you, what, it's just like a pivot or like... It, it's a pivot. With your heel up, you can turn most, most shoes that you, you know, would commonly wear unless you're dressed up fancy um, are...